In the next task number three, we're going to be dealing with a site of origin and see how we can use that to help with the design that has a backdoor link. So first we need to configure a Jira PAS1 and the backdoor link between R6 and R7, and then we have to redistribute the route that it learns from BGP65124 into the EIGRP. Okay, what we're trying to achieve here is for the site 2 and 4 to always use the backdoor link for the traffic between R6 and R7 loop back 10 through 12, and that's going to be accomplished using the site of origin attributes. And at the same time, we want to prevent the routing loops by making sure that R6 and R7 do not learn their own loopback routes or where the backdoor link. Okay, so two things we're trying to accomplish here. So we know that the R6 and R7 has a reachability across the MPLS for their loopbacks, but now we want these two guys to prefer the backdoor link. Okay, okay, maybe it could be that it has a bit of circuits. And we just want to make sure the traffic doesn't actually use the MPLS, but to prefer the backdoor link. And the way to achieve that is what we're going to do is to tag the route. So let's say the R6 advertiser route to R1. We're going to configure R1 so that it sets the site of origin to some value. Let's say it's value X. And then when those routes get advertised to R2, we're going to have pretty much the same thing configured on R2 right here on the session with R7. So that way when R2 sees the route that's coming in and has to advertise out the BGP to R7, it detects that it's matching the local site of origin values and it would not advertise that to R7. Okay, so what we'll be getting is not only that R7 will no longer learn the route that belongs to R6 from R2 because R2 would not advertise it to R7. At the same time that since R7 would not be learning routes from R2, it would not be able to advertise that back potentially to R6 across the backdoor link and then cause R6 to thinking that it can reach its own loop back across the backdoor link. So in the sense, it's potentially also prevent the routing loops. All right, so let's go ahead and start our configuration with the router R6. So first we need to enable EIGRP. So let's do router EIGRP1 no auto with the router ID of 162.16.0.6 passive interface default no passive the serial point to point for the back door is 000 and then network command 172.16.67.6 okay and then we have to redistribute from BGP 65124 and we're just going to give it some metrics just to make sure the Route gets redistributed properly. Now, same thing with R7. No auto. EHRP router ID. Plus 7. Passive default. No passive. On 000. And then network say to 16 to 67.7. Redistribute BGP 65124 metric. There you go. Uh, do I miss? I miss a K value right here. Go. It looks like we already have the EIGRP neighbor came up. Right, and now if you do show IP route on R7, you can see that R7 is still preferring the BGP routes to get to R6, and that's because it has a lower AD, AD20, because we redistribute from BGP to EIGRP. The route that's coming across from R6 is the EIGRP route has the ADF 170, which is external routes. Okay, even though if you're trying to do a network command on the loop back 10 through 12 from R6, it's still going to come across as the ADF 90 for the EIGRP internal. So either way, we're not going to be able to beat the ADF20 that belongs to EBGP. But if you do show IP EIGRP topology for say 6600 slash 24, you can see that the R7 has in fact received the 6600 routes from R6 across the serial interface. It's just that it's not using that route currently because of it has a better route through BGP. All right, but the routes there for us to be used and also, if you look at the topology table for its own route, which is 7.7, .7, you can see that in addition to a local route right here, we are also seeing that same route coming across router 6, which is undesirable. And that's because 
R7 has advertised its loop back to R2, that gets to R1, to R6, and then comes right back around like this. Okay, so we're going to try to prevent that from happening. So what we're going to be configuring next is to tag the routes as it's being learned by the PE routers with the extended community of SOO or site of origin. And that would be first on R1, so router R1, let's do a route map. So we're going to be setting the community with route map. Let's call it SOO. Permit 10 using set command, extended community. See so here's an option for SOO, and we can just pick a number, let's say uh, 24 colon 24. Okay, and then under the router BGP, address IPv4, VRFC1, it's part of the neighbor command, we're going to apply that route map. So route map SOO inbound. Okay, don't forget to refresh the route to force it to pass through that route map. So clear IP BGP VRF C1 65124 inbound. Okay, now if you do show IP BGP VPN V4 6600, you see that the route has been tagged with SOO of 2424. Okay, we would going to be doing pretty much exact same thing on R2 with route map SOO permit 10 set extended community SOO 2424 and then a route BGP address finally BRFC1 with the neighbor of R7 277 route map inbound do clear IP BGP VRF C1 65124 refresh inbound. Okay, so to show IP BGP VPN V4, since we are sitting on R2, let's take a look at its local route, which is R7. See that it's being tagged also with SOO2424. Then it should have received a route from R1 for R6 loopback. That's also been tagged with the 2424. Okay, so now if we go back to R7 and do show IP route, we can now see that the R6 loopback interfaces are being preferred across the serial link. And this is because the R7 no longer receives any routes that belongs to R6 loopback from R2. And that's because R2 drops that route or does not advertise that route because it's detected same SOO value. Okay, and this is just to clarify, the LS doesn't really act as the backup path. So the R6 and R7 will always use the backdoor link for communication between their loopbacks, but it will never use the MPLS for the communication because it doesn't even learn those routes. Okay, so now if you do show IP HRP topology 7700 slash 24, if you recall, R7 was seeing its own route coming from R6. So we hope to no longer seeing that, and that is the case. So you can see that R7 doesn't learn its own routes from R6 anymore, and this is because Again, when R7 advertised routes to R2, R1, and then before R1 advertised to R6, it detects that the same SOO value exists in the BGP route, and it just doesn't even advertise that to R7, so the route doesn't get looped back around like this. Okay, and let's complete our verification on the router R6. So show IP route, and R6 should prefer the serial point-to-point -point with R7 for the R7 loopback right here. You can see those are marked as the EIGRP external routes. And then if you do show IP BGP topology 6600 slash 24, we should not, uh, EIGRP rather, it should not see its own route coming across R7. Okay, just basically the same scenario as before, but in the opposite direction. Okay, so that's how the site of origin attributes are used when you have a backdoor link, and that completes our task number three. Okay, uh, final task number four with the local preference. We're going to be using a local preference and then to configure R2 to make sure the R1 prefer itself to reach switch one loopback 10 through 12. So in our diagram right here, we're going to configure R2 to advertise the route with a better local preference so that way R1 comes through R2 to get to switch one. Okay, if you're already familiar with BGP, this is probably nothing new to you. I mean, local preference is used as part of the best path selection process. And here we just want to demonstrate that even though you're dealing with MPLS VPN, the local preference should work or continues to work the exact same way as before.
Okay, so let's go ahead and configure that quickly. And before we start, let's see what the routing or BGP table looks like on R1. So show IP, BGP, VPN, V4, all for 10, 10, 0, 0, slash 16, for example. It's actually longer right here. So we can see that R1 is currently preferring R4 to get to switch one loopback interfaces. And we're going to change that. And all these by default has a local preference of a 100. So now we're going to carry out the configuration on R2 with the route map from switch one. So what we're going to do is any route that's being learned from switch one by R2, we're going to set a local preference of, let's say anything higher than 100, let's say 200 before the route gets advertised across the MPBGP. Okay, so permit 10, and we're just going to blindly set local pref to 200. Now we do router BGP 100, and we're going to tag it as it comes into the BGP session between PECE, so it has to be part of the IPv4 VRF C1. And our neighbor is switched, uh, switch one, so 102.10. Apply the route map from switch one inbound, and then we'll clear IP BGP VRF C1 65010, which is the AS number of switch one, and then in the inbound direction. So now if we do a show IP BGP VPN V4 all 10 10 0, 0 slash 16 longer. You can see that the local pref value has changed from 100 to 200. Okay, so to verify that change should have been propagated to R1 already, just do up arrow. And you can see that now R1 is preferring R2 because it has local pref of 200 in order to get to uh, switch 1. Okay, and we can test that from R6 doing a quick trace route to 10, 10, 0, 1, sourcing from loopback 10. And there it went from 1, 3, 5, 2, 10. So 1, 3, 5, 2, 10. Okay, so as you can see that nothing has really changed as far as using the VGP attributes for the best path selection, even though we are now dealing with the VPN v4 VGP routes. And that should complete our task number four. So as you can see, the, the BGP configuration for the PECE routing protocol is very straightforward. And it is actually much simpler than using other routing protocols since you no longer have to deal with the redistribution as the routes are being advertised via BGP end-to-end. -end. And at the same time, you also have all of the BGP routing features available to you. And this is probably what, why the BGP is one of the most commonly used protocol for the PECE. And that should wrap up our video on MPLS VPN PECE with BGP. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labminutes.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.